Welcome, welcome back. Hopefully, yep, my mic is on. We are ready to continue to dissect this thing. We only have a few more uh, minutes here. Um, for those who don't know, watch part one first, okay? We're gonna talk about this, uh, this dream that the Lord gave me uh, as it relates to the topic. Um, so again, my name is Dr. Samaria Colbert. I'm the founder of Kingdom Creative Counseling. I'm a licensed therapist and published author, and I help people to get free spiritually, emotionally, mentally free through Jesus Christ. Now, um, as a disclaimer, I did say in my first session here, this is not meant to be controversial, but I do recognize when you're dealing with people's personal and spiritual beliefs, oftentimes people can get defensive. And so I certainly, uh, empathize with that. It is my uh, commission to uh, teach truth, okay? And so I was explain to those at the previous session that um, outside of just doing, uh, being a faith-based therapist, one of the, the uh, primary assignments that God has given me, told me uh, to prepare is to teach, is to train, and it is to educate. And so uh, that is my, uh, that is one of my assignments to the body of Christ. And so I love to teach the word of God. And I actually love teaching, believe it or not, more than I love counseling. And I'm very passionate about counseling. Okay. <clears throat> and so we're talking about uh, tarot cards, horoscopes, crystals, beads, and chakras, and why God is not pleased with that. And again, uh, you're more than welcome to ask a question. As I have time to respond, uh, I will. However, um, those uh, questions that are not necessarily meant to, to ask, uh, that are made with malicious intent, that uh, people just are uh, offended by, uh, <clears throat> I certainly uh, empathize and will pray for you. However, any of those comments will be removed immediately, and I do not respond to those okay all right so we're going to talk why do people participate that i feel like i made my case very clear i could have went scripture upon scripture upon scripture and really just did a whole teaching i may even write a book about it i don't know uh as the lord leads but there's so much more information but again we have to limit our time here okay but this is going to be part two all right so why do people go to these things one remember remember this uh, remember this, and that is a uh, participation of these things. It's not necessarily, uh, it is a heart issue. It is a heart issue. Um, remember when God was telling people, uh, don't participate with these things, he would say, turn your hearts back towards me, turn your hearts back towards me. And so when people uh, try to serve God and their beads and their crystals, their heart is not truly wholeheartedly convinced that God is the only way, the truth and the life uh, as they should as Christians, we believe that's what we believe is Christian, okay? And so their heart is, um, is, is kind of caught in between two opinions. And if you really want to serve God wholeheartedly, you got to make a decision for God. I live. This is the God that I serve. And you know, you can't have God and your beads and your crystals and your horoscopes. Okay. Now, if you don't serve God, you may not necessarily understand what I'm saying. Okay. There's only one way to God. And again, I do encourage you guys watch part two first and then watch part two. So another reason why it's a heart issue is one, because these folks really don't trust God. There was an example of King Saul. King Saul had lost his throne. He lost his anointing. He lost his respect. And, uh, and he, he just lost a lot uh, because of rebellion. Remember, these things are rooted in rebellion as well. Um, but there goes a, a, a story that King Saul goes to consult a medium. Okay. And he, he consults the medium because he could not get in contact with a real prophet who was the prophet of God, uh, prophet Samuel. And so he consulted the medium, okay, to give him answers. Remember, God does not work on our timetable. And so one of the reasons why people seek these things is because when they don't trust God and they get tired of waiting on God. Remember, God does not work on your timetable, whether you agree or whether you don't. He does not work on your timetable. He does work though. And so uh, King Saul sought, uh, sought a medium or a psychic because he refused to wait and because the anointing God was off of him. And let's be very clear. You are not under the anointing if you participate in these things. I don't care how much you preach, prophesy, lay hands. You are not operating under the anointing. You're operating under what the scripture called a familiar spirit. We participate these, in these things because we do not really truly know God or trust him. Okay. Uh, also a spirit of deception, a spirit of deception. We believe what the forefront of these things say. Oh, if you do these crystals, it'll give you, if you, it'll give you healing and light. 
uh, or if you seek horoscopes, I'm a Libra, I'm a Capricorn, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a we believe them because they're giving us guidance. Well, you think they're giving you guidance. They, they do it for a minute now. Demon, demon will tell you, well, that they'll do it for a minute. And then you keep, if you keep, the more you get into it, it'll turn. I'm telling you, they turn. You can't ever trust a demon. Okay. We're operating under a spirit of deception. Deception always comes through conversation. Deception always comes through information. You start hearing conversation. Hmm, I work with such a and then we 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 think in our carnal minds, hmm, hmm, well, maybe it's not that bad. Remember, deception came from the beginning through conversation. Uh, the Satan said to Eve, did God really say you can't eat the fruit of the tree of good uh, of, 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 of that, that particular tree? Did God really say that? So even though these scriptures are clearly outlined in the scripture, what to do, what not to do, we say, well, why is it so bad? Is, is the Bible really the word of truth? Did God really say that? Even though he really said that in the word. Lack of discernment. Remember the scripture says the, 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 the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth, all truth truth and you can't get through the holy spirit with your tarot cards your beads none of that okay healing comes through the holy spirit as well spiritual gifts come from the holy spirit why do you need to seek a psychic when the bible says the holy spirit the holy spirit will lead you into all truth tell you what is yet to come lead you into healing protect you leading to peace joy uh love everlasting we don't need all that when we got the holy spirit that's like crazy. <laughs> I mean, hold on, y'all. I'm shining again. Hold on. <laughs> y'all don't make, that really don't even make good sense. They don't make good sense. The Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. And so when you're led away to believe the deception, you are led away to deception. You don't really believe that God can do alone what he said. Okay. Another thing is they don't study their Bibles. Unfortunately, we live in a day and time where Christians do not read their Bibles. They don't have a personal relationship with God. All you really have to do is say, God, I'm confused here. It's okay to be confused. It's okay to have questions. Don't use your humanistic thinking to think, okay, God, well, well that don't make sense. You have to see God. He'll lead you into all truth. God is not also saying, he's not going to be, my child, come forth, thou shalt, he's not going to do that, he's just going to talk to you, he'll lead you to truth, not one of the ways in which I started really developing a, uh, a, a love for the word of God, obviously I was raised in church, but I really started loving the word of God was when I went away to college, believe it or not, I was taught to read the word, but I, I didn't really know how to love, 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 love the word, they, they said read your Bible, they didn't really tell us how, but I remember I, I was on Bennett College campus many, 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 many years ago, um, and I would hear things, different professors saying things, you know, I'm a, um, I can't say I'm, a, I'm not an intellectual, but I'm someone who loves to learn. And I remember hearing things, it's like, oh, that sound okay. And I don't sound, well, da, da, da. and you know, the, you are college campuses, you are some of the, the most brilliant minds there is. I mean, you got some professor that got four degrees and, and a PhD and they just know all this stuff and, and it sound good. And I never forget, I remember I would go home, when I go home, excuse me, I would go to my dorm and I would say, God, just personal relation. We're not going deep. We're not going down fasting for 40 days. Ha, da, 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 da. You know, we're not going to, to the hoops and nothing like that. I would just go home and I say, God, like, like I heard Professor such and such say this. I, ho I heard such and such say this. Like, what does that mean? Like, I don't get it. And he would show me through the world what it really means. I was actually recently at a training and there was these you know, Christian training, Christian this, that, but there was a, you, uh, a spirit of uh, religion, religion and intellectualism. And so they were saying some things and God again brought me right back to his word. So again, when you have a relationship with God, it does, it's not just, I confess Jesus in my heart, now he's there. It's saying, okay, God, I don't really understand what I'm hearing. It's impossible to know everything, but your word says that you will lead us into all truth. Tell me, when you read scripture, you can't look at scripture to validate what you want. You got to let the scripture teach you, not you trying to figure it out and put it into way well it's all god no it's not all god but well, i can do whatever because the grace of god no that ain't what that means 
So when you see people on social media, which I love to call out social media, because people will tell you what's in their heart for real, but they won't say it in front of your face. And you know, if they're around like a true Christian in front of your face, they'll be spiritual. But when they're on social media, they just tell their whole heart. Well, what y'all think about this? What does the Bible say about this? Don't you know that you don't have to post it on social media? You know, you could you can actually pray. Say, God, what do you think? Hearing God is not difficult. All you gotta do is say, God, I don't know. You can go deep if you don't have to. You don't have to go forty day fast. You ain't got fall out. You ain't got to have a whole bunch of uh, crying spells. If that happens, that's fine. You don't have to be acrobatic. You don't have to uh, cry boohoo. Just say, God, I want to know you. I there are things God is not. It's not Santa Claus. You can do what you want when you want, or as long as you're good, you're okay. He his grace is not like oh have at it bye. No. No, that's not how God works. God has things that he likes. He has things that he does. Like he is an actual, uh, he, there's a personhood of who he is. He has standards. He has uh, principles. Just like we do. If you are a human being, you need to have standards, principles, how people should interact with you. God has the same thing. And we're not doing it to try to earn his grace or earn his love. But if you say you love God, why are you for something that he is clearly against? All right, let's keep it going. So they don't study their Bible. Um, and they lack belief that God is really going to do what he said. Okay. It's tight, but it's right. I'm going to put y'all on pause for a minute. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to put y'all on pause for a minute because I'm actually cooking my dinner right now. <laughs> and I want to make sure my chicken don't burn. Y'all excuse me. Hold on for one minute. <laughs> All right, y'all, I'm not going to edit that out. <laughs> it's real life over here, okay? Um, so let me tell you about this dream I had. We're just about done. And this is why I decided to do this. Um, I keep saying live. It's not alive. This is why I decided to do this um, teaching. Uh, so in the dream, I, I had been praying because uh, about my assignment to really teach and, to, and to, to just really get into the word of God. And um, I had a few projects that I was working on. Guys always tell me, you got to submit, you got to study, you got to study. You want to be a great teacher, you got to study. And so, but I had another, another couple of projects I was working on and I didn't study like I should have, I know. And so uh, the Lord came, gave me this warning. Okay, Mike's still on, yes. Uh, he gave me this warning and, and through a dream, in the dream. And I won't go to all into detail. In the dream, uh, there were Christians that were participating in these things. Uh, I remember knowing an a, a individual that I know that's actually a pastor and I saw him and in the dream, he um, was wearing, I can't remember, it was a necklace that had one of these um, signs on, these one of these signs, these horoscope signs. I don't know if it was a horoscope or a, 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 a sign of one of those things. And in the dream, he had gotten the seeds basically. And so he was wearing these things seeking healing. Okay. And in the dream, I'm going, I'm thinking, oh my God, this is demonic. This is, this is not right. And I hear him and he starts speaking in tongues. Whatever, I'm not repeating the tongue. I'm just telling you, he was speaking in tongues. But when he was speaking in tongues, so there was no power. And I looked at him and I yelled, that's not the Holy Spirit. You're not speaking in tongues as, a, as of God. Now he was speaking in tongues, but there was no power. There was no anointing. It was, he was, it was just, he was just dead. It was just, it was, you know, anyone anyway, can speak in tongues. I mean, yeah, that's how they are filled with the spirit. Uh, and so and I said, that's not the Holy Spirit. And I felt this urge to share and to tell people about why this is wrong. And this is where the warning for me was. Because remember, I had kind of studied like I should the last few days. And so um, prior to having the dream. And I remember I was going, I remember I run, I was going to tell them why it's wrong. I was going to go find the Bible. In a dream, I was look, looking frantically in my house. I couldn't find a Bible. I was like, oh my goodness, where's my Bible? Where's my Bible? Oh my God. Because all these Christians started being deceived. I couldn't find my Bible. I couldn't find my Bible. The word of God says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. That's what it says. It also says, be you ready in season and out of season. It tells us to be a workman, not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I couldn't find my Bible. And apparently I hadn't hidden it in my, I had not hidden it in my heart to be able to say, hey, this is what the word of God says. In real life, I have multiple Bibles. I have electronic Bibles, got Bibles. I mean, you know, I just got Bibles. I just, 
you know, I love to, I love to learn. I couldn't find my Bible and I couldn't remember where the scripture was telling me that this is wrong to teach that man of God. It was wrong. He had gotten deceived because got tired of waiting on God's deliverance. The warning to me uh, was, again, there are many Christians who are trying to serve God and their idols and their horoscopes and uh, their tarot cards and their chakras. They don't know they're deceived. The man of God was speaking in tongues, but he had no power because he had come into agreement with the demonic entity. You have no real power when you do these things. And the warning to me was, sis, you got to study the word of God and you got to be ready in season, out of season. I want to give you this warning. The Bible says that in the last and evil days that, that people will be deceived because of signs and wonders. If you don't want to know truth, if you want to know truth, you'll never fully know truth, solely focus on signs and wonders. I got to study the word of God. You got to know it. But we can't, the only way to protect us from deception, this type of deception is to know what the word of God has to say. I can tell when people post on their social media that they do not know the word of God. What do y'all think about this scripture? Why does the Bible say this stuff? The Bible ain't never, well, it's fine. I get it. Anyway, I serve God. I want, I just find even the Bible said, this is, this is the way walk in it even though the bible is very clear now i just gave you a few scriptures and i know that was a long live the last time i just gave you a few you can literally old testament new testament i mean if you really want to know i can't tell you everything it's all there remember it always comes off as an angel of light and it's really demonic and on the surface it looks good oh this is light this is healing it's really not Remember, it's the same thing God warned us about in the beginning. We just changed the name. So all we did is change the name, okay? So why do people get to see? They get tired of waiting on God to respond so they seek other means just like King Saul did. Remember, just because someone prophesied and speaks in tongues does not mean they're under the anointing. I must study if I'm going to be a great teacher. You must study. We all must know the word of God if we're not, if we're going to prevent ourselves from being deceived. Okay, there is a counterfeit anointing. There is a counterfeit glory. Now remember, man, I think it was Matthew 20. Did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not do this in your name? Did we not do that? God said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Who are workers of iniquity? Those who try to use spiritual means to bring about spiritual blessings absent from who God is working iniquity. A part of iniquity is this. The only way we will survive is if we have a real relationship with God, not a personality, not a person. Get connected with a great spiritual teacher you know, uh, for me, uh, I love my church, but my pastor is an excellent teacher. As a matter of fact, he does a teaching every year about Halloween and how that's really demonic. If I can find it, once he, if he, I'm pretty sure the church will either repost it and I'll repost it to my Facebook. I'll just share it on my Facebook page. Or maybe if I can find the link, um, I'll post it under my YouTube channel so you guys can see it. Um, but it's, he breaks that thing down like verbatim. Um, so if I can find it, if not, just follow my YouTube, um, follow my my Facebook and I'll see if I can find it. Or if he does it again, I'll see if I can find it somewhere and repost it because it's really good. Um, never dismiss something. A lot of times people are like, oh, it's not that bad. It's just, it's just a religious spirit. You know, as I said in the last live, you know, everything is a religious spirit because you don't agree. Everything is not a religious spirit because you decide not to agree with it. Okay, some people just don't want to hear truth. And so they just want to give you a label, religious spirit. Oh, it's not that serious. Yes, it is that serious. It is. Remember the truth of who God is and the mysteries of his kingdom are only hidden, are hidden, hidden to those who practice these things. That's good. I got to say it again. Remember the truth of who God is and the mysteries of his kingdom are hidden to those who practice these things. This is why people do these things that are very carnal, not, sp not spiritual from the, from the perspective of what God has to say, the Holy Spirit that defines our spirituality. 
Romans 8, 7 says, for the carnal mind is enmity, which means against God, for it is uh, not subject or submitted to the laws of God, and it indeed it cannot be, nor can it be. So when you don't submit to the principles and the laws and the precepts and the ways God teaches us to worship, your mind is enmity before God. You can't really truly understand true spiritual things. You can't really be truly enlightened. You can't be avoiding of deception. It doesn't work that way. Imagine seeking enlightenment only to seek further deception. Okay. We must trust God. So I've kind of answered my, my question. How do we deal with these things? It's going to be tight, but it's right because a lot of times we've established relationships with demonic entities. We ex ex establish habitual practices with demonic entities. So it's going to be tight, but it's going to be right. You must do what God told the people of Israel to do back from the beginning, destroy the altars of Baal, destroy it. Take away the horoscopes, take away the text message that tells you your, your daily horoscopes. Stop uh, judging people based upon their, uh, their, what, their sign. Well, I'm not gonna date someone that's a Capricorn because Capricorns are like this. That is demonic in itself, God. Let it go. Turn your hearts, repent. Turn your hearts back towards God and repent for those things. Say, God, I'm sorry for trying to worship you and praise you and my, my stuff. Because God ain't never approved of that. He's not sharing his glory with you and your horoscopes. If he is the healer of all mankind, he's not going to allow you or want you to go to some crystals that somebody made to get healed. That's why you're still sick. The Holy Spirit leads us into all enlightenment, but he's not going to allow himself to be subject to a carnal mind according to the scripture. You must develop a, a love for the word of God. And some of y'all go to churches where you shout. I'm just going to tell it like a T.I. is, but you don't learn nothing about the word of God. You get in, you, it's, it's, it's motivational speaking. Don't know nothing about the Bible, how to read it, how to dissect. You just want to go sh shout and tell me God is getting ready. You may want to consider. Yes, go, go to a church where God's presence dwells. Yes, and that we do praise God. Yes, but we also learn of him too. All that should be there. It's not like one verse is the other. If we shout and we go to a teaching church, then, you know, the, the anointing is not there versus if we shout and we praise God, we just have a good old concert. You don't need to turn the lights down low and, and go to the front and have a concert to experience God's presence. Is it about the show or is it about God? You can go to a church that does all of it. Worships God, good praise team, but you come away knowing more of God. All right. There's so much more I can say, but seek him. You may not agree with what I said. Still seek him. God, in your prayer time today, Lord, like I heard some things. It was hard. It was tight. This, this crazy therapist who she is, you know, I don't know about her. Okay. But what do you have to say? And I do that all the time. Like I, I, I love the word of God. And I love to hear great teachers, but there's nobody that I love more than God himself. And there's nobody that, that has ever heard teach the word of God that has got it right every single time. Nobody. I don't care how wonderful they are. I never miss. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Because you're a human being. We all miss. Period. So if you don't agree with what I say, it's okay. Say, God, what do you mean? I don't, I don't get it. He will, he will, he will, he will show you. Get a, get a, get a Bible. I, I, now, y'all know I have, my, well, I'm not going to show y'all my, <laughs> I have my tablet, but I have a regular, but get a, a paper Bible, okay? And you do your cross references, going to the NLT, NLV, whatever the different versions, cross reference it. But I promise you, if you go to God, he'll be like, yeah, she's telling the truth. That's right. 
I want, I don't want you to be deceived, son, daughter. I don't, I love you. The reason why I told you these things is what God says, because I'm warning you. I don't want you to be held captive or yoked up by the enemy. He's not telling you the truth. He's telling you a lie. God will do that. All right, y'all, there's so much more I could say, but I'm not. <laughs> if you have any other suggestions for some teachings that you want me to do, feel free to, again, let me know. Uh, I'm going to go eat my dinner. <laughs> okay. All right. And you can all can, again, check me out, www.kingdomcreativecounseling.com. Uh, That's the name of my, my practice. Now, you may not necessarily have to hear this message on the call, but, you know, you have to be in North Carolina. Um, so maybe, because this had not, this had to do a whole, but, you know, let's, it does have to do with mental health. Uh, when you seek truth and when you receive truth, it does help you to it, it set you free. So in some ways, maybe indirectly it did. If you just want to know a little bit more about me, uh, again, my website is www.samaricoper.com. Okay. God bless you. We'll be back for another time, another day, another, you know, another moment, <laughs> another, another wisdom. Okay. Again, www.samaricoper.com. Thank y'all. And.